This ain't your ordinary football show. It's the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Rader and Coach Bobby Wilder. Brought to you by Priority Automotive. Disappointing, maybe not a strong enough word for what happened on Saturday as Old Dominion squandered an 11-point fourth quarter lead and lost to the number one team in the CAA Towson on homecoming weekend of all times. But who would have thought just eight weeks ago that a team playing in its first year in the conference would even be in such a position? Are expectations too high for a three-year program? Let's find out. The Old Dominion Football Show starts now. I'm Bruce Rader along with Coach Bobby Wilder almost a week after a disappointing four-point loss to first place Towson. So, Coach, let's start with the question. Mm -hmm. It seems you have been playing above expectations all season. Are we expecting too much from this team? I don't think so. I don't think the fans, anybody are expecting more from the team than we are from ourselves. Our, our motto to start the year was to be in it to win it. You know, the goal was to win a conference championship, and I'm really pleased with where we are, Bruce. We've played 29 games. We're 22-7, and seven, which is a 76% win percentage, and, and we want to compete for and win championships, so let's keep the expectations high. Well, your offense is rolling along. The, at least it did the first three quarters on right. Saturday. It looks like you might have ended up with, what, 600 yards and maybe 50 points. The defense mm -hmm. is playing well, and then that fourth quarter breakdown. Yeah, we had uh, 475 yards and 30. 35 points with three quarters. So you're right. We thought we were well on our way to 50 and 600. And what really turned the game, Bruce, was at the end of the third quarter and seven minutes into the fourth quarter, they went on an 18 play, 88 yard drive. Now we stopped them. Aaron Evans, big open field tackle. We're up 35 24, but then we come out offensively. First down, we drop a pass. Then we get a holding penalty on a first down run by Tyree Lee. So we go three plays and punt offensively. They go back into another long drive in the fourth quarter. Towson had the ball for 12 minutes and 30 seconds. That's the longest I've ever seen. We only had it for 2.30, and it was, it was our fault. It wasn't anything Towson did. We could not get off the field on third and fourth down, and we could not complete passes on third and fourth down offensively, Bruce. And that was what was the most disappointing thing to me about the fourth quarter, our inability to handle third and fourth down. Let's talk about that defense. Uh, poor tackling, but you did have six sacks. And Ronnie mm -hmm. Cameron and Craig Wilkins, both outstanding games again. But you give up those long plays. Mm -hmm. How do you correct that? Yeah, Ronnie Cameron and Craig Wilkins, as you mentioned, are, are playing at an all-conference level, outstanding. In terms of the long passes, we addressed that this week in practice. It goes back to third and fourth down. Those were the key areas, and that's what we've worked on starting with Tuesday practice. We did it again Wednesday. We did it Thursday. I put them right back in the fourth and 29 sit on defense that we didn't handle it properly. But then also, Bruce, the fourth and 11 sit on offense. That We're in the two-minute drill at the end of the game. Down 39-35, we got the ball in our 41, minute five to go with two timeouts. We go sack, sack, nine-yard completion, fourth and 11, interception. So we've got to be able to convert in both offense and defense in those fourth down sets. But on the positive side, another mm -hmm. outstanding performance by your young quarterback, Taylor Heineke, mm -hmm. and Nick Mayers also had a good game. Yeah, you're right, Bruce. I mean, you look at Taylor Heineke, 22 for 37 for 360 yards, three touchdowns. Could have been five. Mayers fumbled into the end zone on one, and, and we had a drop touchdown pass that would have put us up 42-24. Uh, and he also had six drop passes. He's completing 70% of his passes right now, eight touchdowns against only one interception, and he's second in the league right now, Bruce, in only two and a half games in passing efficiency at quarterback. And then Nick Mayers, seven catches, 166 yards, a touchdown. Uh, really pleased with how those two performed. Does Taylor start a quarterback tomorrow? He does, yeah. Thomas is still rehabbing. He ran yesterday. Marty Bradley, our trainer, had him out running, but there's still uh, some issues with his mobility. So he'll only be the emergency third quarterback uh, tomorrow. All right, Coach. We're going to talk about Villanova mm -hmm. in a minute when Coach gives his uh, priorities of the game for tomorrow. But first, you know, Thomas DeMarco is a big a part of the Old Dominion football program as anyone in the entire university, but an injury to this special guy a couple of weeks ago has changed everything, at least for now. Chris Reckling joins us with the latest. It wasn't supposed to be like this. Old Dominion quarterback Thomas DeMarco never dreamed he would spend his senior year on the sideline watching his team as he nurses a high ankle sprain. Once DeMarco went down against UMass, he immediately tried to right the wrong. First thing I was thinking about is, uh, you know, how fast can I get back on the field? What can I do? How many treatments can I get? Um, you know, kind of assess the situation. What are they going to tell me versus what do I think I can do? 
Um, initially, they were like, this can be a five-week injury. Since ODU returned to football two years ago, DeMarco had taken nearly every snap in every game. He transferred to ODU from a junior college in California. While he has proven so much in his career at ODU, prior to his injury, DeMarco wasn't quite done adding to his legacy. You know, I have a lot of things that I would like to prove, a lot of things that I would like to do. Um, you know, I had a long journey to get here, and then it just kind of stopped for me. So I'm trying to be as positive as I can. Um, you know, I try not to think of it that way because, to be honest, I'm surprised I'm not crying right now. I mean, I'm, I'm frustrated with it. DeMarco has started running in practice, but is not quite ready for game action and cutting on his ankle. He hopes to return for the final three games of the regular season. Now I'm going to try and see if I can push myself a little more in practice. Um, uh, there really is no time on it. I mean, I, I try and come back every week. I always say that, you know, if I can play on Saturday, I will, um, you know, make the judgment on game day. Uh, trying to come back this week. If not, I'll try and come back next week. Just trying to do the best I can to get out there. In Norfolk, Chris Reckling for the Old Dominion Football Show. Thanks, Chris. Since the dawn of sports, there have been those willing to go above and beyond to support their teams. That is why Big Blue was named the Capital One National Mascot of the Year last year, and you can vote for him again. Go to CapitalOneBowl.com and vote Big Blue as the Mascot of the Year. But still to come, he could be the National Defensive Player of the Year. But let's see if Craig Wilkins can get by Ali Lucia this week during the one-minute drill. And what happens if you show up late to the game? Well, you have to tailgate afterwards. Meet our tailgaters of the week. The Old Dominion Football Show is back in 30 seconds. Of course, we have... Craig Wilkins. If you could be any celebrity, who would you be? I'd have to say Chad Johnson. Well, Chad Ochocinco, if I must be correct. If you weren't playing football, what sport would you be playing? Oh, oh this is tough. Not too good in basketball. <laughs> I guess I have to say soccer, because I was pretty good in soccer when I was younger, but it got too big for soccer and <laughs> found football. Are you a pool or a beach guy? Um, I do even one. Pretty much any chance I get to have my shirt off is a good opportunity for me. I work pretty hard on my body and my abs, so any chance I get, I'm fine with either one. But you're not going to show us your abs? I know. I know Chad Ocho Cinco would show us his abs. All right. Good work. I'd say they would pass the test at the beach or the pool. You want to get the last word on this one-minute drill? Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to say hello to my mom, my dad, everybody back in D.C., my high school, H.D. was in high school. Good luck to y'all. And can I give a shout-out to my girlfriend, Brittany? Is that fine? <laughs> Hi, Brittany. <laughs> Go Monarchs. He's such a beast on the field, but such a nice guy in the locker room. That's where... Craig Wilkins and Bruce Rader are similar, always looking to take their shirts off on the beach and show ass? their ass. No, 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 I won't do that. <laughs> the pregame festivities are always one of the highlights for ODU fans, but tonight's tailgaters of the week didn't get to start their party until after the game. Watch okay, this. Uh, hey, great game, tough loss. I tell you, real tough. Uh, had a great time here. Uh, too bad this is our start of our tailgate because we had a flat tire coming into the game. And uh, we're just bringing our, our food out and everything. Uh, we kind of feel bad for Coach Bobby Wilder and the team, uh, but we can feel his pain. We had uh, some road troubles. They played a, played a great game. Uh, tough, tough plays at the end of the game, really. Well, we got, you know, your typical uh, veggie tray for the healthy conscious. We got some baked chicken. We tried not to fry it, and of course we have some uh, Salmon, uh, salmon wedges here. Uh, again, you know, trying trying to be straight up with it. Of course, we have the chocolate Oreo brownie. Uh, you better be you better be careful with those. And you know that's basically what we got. Go I go to you. Go go to you. Still to come, Coach Wilder answers your question, and he gives tomorrow's priorities of the game for the Monarchs Road Contest against Villanova. 
Coach, you're five and two, headed to Villanova tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Tell us about tomorrow's opponent. We're really excited to be playing Villanova, Bruce. This is a team that won the national championship in 2009, national semifinalists last year. And the biggest difference in their team is they graduated 17 starters off of last year's team. They're playing with 50 freshmen and sophomores right now, and just like us, playing with 11 true freshmen. All right, now the tough questions from the fans. It's time for the Coach's Corner. Mark from Newport News wants to know if you think the CAA will ever have a championship game in football. Mark, based on our current system right now, we would not play a plus one CAA championship game. And the reason why is we have a 20-team national championship tournament that starts the first week at the end of the regular season, so it doesn't allow for a plus one game. Thanks for the question, Mark. Larry in Norfolk has this. Coach, I noticed after ODU recovered the onside kick, the Towson head coach was livid, and he was out on the field giving the officials an earful. Is that grounds for a penalty? He was almost in the middle of the field. Yeah, he, he, you're right, Larry. He was out there. The only thing that I think saved him from getting an unsportsmanlike conduct was the fact that he had called a timeout, but that's really a judgment call up to the officials. Thanks for the question. Marvin from Norfolk wants to know, on the fourth down and 29 play, should Coach Rondo have told the defensive backs to bat the ball down instead of going for the interception? Yeah, good question. That's exactly what we teach to our defensive backs, and that's what we were drilling again this week. It's our job, starting with me as coaches, to make sure the players understand if it's a fourth and long situation, we don't need to intercept the ball because we don't need the possession. What we need is that ball on the ground. Thanks for the question. All right, Coach, now it's time for your priorities of the game. What do you have to do to beat Villanova tomorrow? Well, the number one thing that we've got to get down in this football game is we've got to start fast and finish strong. And what I mean by that, Bruce, Villanova's a team that has only scored six points in the first quarter so far this year, so we've got to take advantage of that and then finish in the fourth quarter. Number two, we've got to win the turnover battle, something we've been very good at the past three weeks. We're doing a nice job offensively possessing the ball. Got to get a few more takeaways tomorrow. And the third thing, get off the field defensively on third and fourth down. Towson was eight for 14 in the second half in this football game, so we got to do a better job with that. All right, Coach, don't get angry with me, but I want to remind you, <laughs> Old Dominion fans, to go to coachoftheyear.com and vote for Coach Wilder as the 1AA Coach of the Year because if he wins, he receives $50,000 to donate to his favorite charity, and the Alumni Association at Old Dominion gets another twenty grand. That's coachoftheyear.com. And the donations are the best thing about it. That's the only thing about it. <laughs> Villanova tomorrow afternoon. Coach, have a great weekend. What do you say you, to the 12th Monarch? Let's get Bruce out on the beach. That's what I say. You're the best, 12th Monarchs. Have a great weekend, everybody. <laughs> Enjoy the game.